Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, today is the Feast of St. James the Greater. Welcome back to God's Playbook. This is another of Jesus' power players on his team, Team Apostle. James, one of the two James the Apostles, who we call the greater as opposed to the less. One of the sons of Zebedee, along with St. John, his brother, was one of the first followers of Jesus. We know that St. James was a fisherman, and the Gospels tell us that he and his brother John leave their father and follow Jesus as soon as he calls them. Jesus referred to them often as sons of thunder. And along with St. Peter, the brothers were particularly close to Jesus. I often call St. Peter his captain and James and John his assistant captains. So on his chest, he'd have the A here. And the A reminding us that he is one of the three that Jesus always pulls aside for these special moments. Think of the transfiguration in which he and Peter and John went up the mountain. Think of after his ascension. It is St. James who spread the gospel across Israel and in the Roman kingdom as well. He's the first of the apostles to be martyred. He's called the greater to distinguish himself from James the less. And he's the patron saint of Spain and of pilgrims. So many people, even to today, walk the Camino, many different paths that lead to the church in Santiago de Compostela, where the bodily remains of St. James are found. While I have not been on the Camino myself, I know so many others who've walked the short Camino, the seven-day, the 21-day, and then the full 30-day journey. This beautiful tradition of walking in pilgrimage like St. James from community to community, relying totally on God, showing dependency on God, teaches pilgrims from all over the world to do that same thing, to live simply. And by pilgrimage, they are deepening their relationship with God by offering sacrifice. In the church at Santiago de Compostela, there is a massive, massive golden statue of St. James behind the altar. And the tradition is for you to climb the stairs behind the altar and to almost give him like a bear hug or if you are over his shoulder. And the tradition is, is that by hugging him in such a way, you are taking on the mission of St. James, which is to bring the gospel message to all the world, and that to live by that gospel message too. I've had the great privilege of concelebrating Mass in that beautiful church, of hugging the statue and kneeling before the relics of St. James that are in the crypt below the main altar. This church is also well known for the massive, massive censer that contains incense within this basilica. I encourage you to look at the videos or films on the church in Santiago de Compostela because this censer is usually lifted by seven to ten monks pulled by rope. And it swings across the sanctuary in a very profound way to originally remove some of the odor of pilgrims after many days of not bathing, for obvious reasons, and also natural sweat that the body exudes that were in the church after their long journey of the Camino. To this day, on special occasions, the censer is used and is used not to dismiss smells, although I can assure you it does that, but to continue to give honor and praise to God in this massive and beautiful church. 
at the World Youth Day in 2011, in the days of the diocese where I brought pilgrims to this church for Mass, I was given the great privilege of concelebrating the Mass, but then even afterwards I was asked to light the charcoal in the censer as it swung above the basilica and blessing all the pilgrims down below. In doing so, friends, I literally had to use a shovel with both hands, and I shoveled incense, at least 10 shovels, into this massive, massive thurible before the monks lifted it high to the sky and it began swinging above our heads. I must tell you, this is something that I will never forget, a great privilege in my life, and also somewhat comical, because as it began to swing, I was mesmerized by it as I saw it almost hit the roof. And as it was making its way in front of the altar, it almost hit the Italian priest that was standing there looking at it, i.e. yours truly. And the celebrant just reminded me by pushing me back out of its way to make sure that I didn't become like a mosquito on a windshield and uh, I might have been heading to the rafters myself as I was stuck to the censer. So thankfully, I live to tell you this tale. But nonetheless, as fun as it is to see the spirituality behind the incense and how our prayers rise to God like incense is a reminder that the prayers of the pilgrims, like St. James, rise up to God. So, each of us, are called to live mission like St. James. Each of us, after an encounter with Jesus, are to tell others and to lead others by what we say and do. Perhaps you might be called to pilgrimage through the Camino walk. I know many of our listeners, you can also attest, having walked in the footsteps of St. James, deeply spiritual and moving experience. Or perhaps many of you have visited the St. James Basilica and may not have walked the Camino, but see people from all over the world who have and are inspired by their faith witness too. St. James continues to touch the lives of so many. May we fulfill our missionary call to be disciples of Jesus Christ too. And through the intercession of St. James, may we grow in our relationship with God and help others to do the same. St. James the Great, pray for us. For God's Playbook, friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi or GoFundMe. Thanks and God bless.